the second boss of the game has been defeated, and that means that we gotta kick back and wait for the, the change of heart to actually take hold. Even though they try to convince us right now that, oh no, it may or may not happen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, game. <laughs> Who are you even trying to fool? Anyway, uh, the X folders. Yes. No, even in Japanese, yes. <laughs> So, we're watching some DVDs. Yeah, I mean, uh, continuing the the whole weird uh, main character of Persona games always being a, a Ludite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ordering from, from home shopping networks, uh, watching DVDs on an old CRT television. I'm hanging out with his cat who's going full spread legs there. Yeah, oh, that's a really cute, like, cat animation. I just... It is. I can't imagine a real cat actually liking to sit like that. But then again, not a real cat. That's true. What did you get a point? I am getting for? so close to up in that guts. <laughs> I've been eating so many gigantic burgers. Let me tell you, which is for some reason the only way that you can up your your guts. Eating those like you know challenge burgers. Well, that that's the only way your body learns. It's the same with germs. You just you gotta just yeah. expose yourself to enough germs, and your immune system gets better. Um, I'm vaccinating myself against ha lots of several pounds of hamburger um, every single day. Please, please do not take this as medical advice. This is we are not trained medical professionals. No, do take this as medical advice. I'm a doctor. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, doctor of infernos. So, so if you want an inferno, that's <laughs> your diet. Yeah, I mean, okay. To be honest, I am closer to like a doctor Eggman than a medical doctor, but you know. Yeah, you're kind of a like a villainous. You know doctor. what they say: the more, the merrier. You, you don't, you don't have a PhD. Well, I mean, you don't have a medical degree. You have a PhD in uh, in villainy. The hard knocks. Yeah. From the oh. the streets university. <laughs> Are they accredited? Yeah, anyway, yes, Bond with Igor is growing deeper. I think this is going to happen after every single one of the, the major dungeons that we finish. Blah, blah, blah. It's it's good and everything, but, you know, this is, this is not really... I gotta say, Igor is not the most interesting of social links. He's just kind of like, ah, hey, you did it. Well, I mean, keep, forming a social link with, doing your, it. with your, like... <laughs> I mean, that that's Stockholm Syndrome. No wonder those girls look Swedish. But... <laughs> Really, that's a, yeah, I don't anyway. know. I mean, that is kind of true. It's like you are literally a prisoner, literally and figuratively. Like you, they could at least like give you a change of clothes when you're in there. It wouldn't even be difficult. It's it's like a palace of your mind. I, actually, I'm not entirely. It's never been really explained exactly what the Velvet Room is, even in the original Persona, Persona One. And, you know, the, the Persona games didn't really get of this style until Persona 3. Mm. It was kind of a weird alternate dimension that you just entered. I think it's supposed to be. I, I kind of, like, speculated on this before where it's like Igor is almost supposed to be an angel type of figure. And maybe that's supposed to be a yeah, a, a glimpse of heaven. Maybe it's a reference to, to Twin Peaks with the Red Room. Who knows? There's many, many different possibilities. But then wouldn't it be... Well... Blue Velvet? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, 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 that's why Igor's always telling me the baby needs fuck. <laughs> I thought that was a weird line. And they didn't really do it justice in the English version, but holy crap, after everything he says in the Japanese one. So yeah, Makoto being uh, very, very subtle in her, in her intentions. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, it's we already know what the eventual outcome with the interactions with her is going to be, but it's we're we're sure taking a long time. Um, yeah. I know that for a lot of people, like she's one of the, the 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 favorite characters to appear in the game, but as of right now, she's just kind of fulfilling the laziest antagonistic role possible. The game is like uh, is like Pulp Fiction, and that it's non-linear, um, and I don't know. I would say it's only slightly non-linear. We only get the uh, the the baffling existence of the Najima scenes. Who is who is Makoto's sister? So, I mean, it's more that you, know, you just got all the the cultural uh, the, the 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 osmosis of, of what people know about the game, always informing you about things that are going to be happening eventually. Although speaking of uh, things that I don't know anything about, we got more royal specific content with uh, with Maruki again. 
Which, I mean, so far in these sessions, I've kind of liked to... I, I, I've kind of liked uh, Maruki's whole approach, which has been fleshing out the characters a little bit more, but Ryuji really doesn't need it. I mean, I still think that so far he's the most interesting guy in the game. Yeah, yeah well... I, Maybe more guys. I, I like this scene because it's like we're just getting more Ryuji, and he's just giving us the goods. Like, just get his character. And, it, and it's not Ryuji, you know, Ryuji, just stating what's happening. <laughs> Yep, yep. He, he does have a weirdly... He, Ryuji doesn't really seem to do too much since he's gotten kicked off of the, the track team. Which I sort of like that it's like this is that realization of him by that. <laughs> and of course, then he immediately starts insulting uh, Maruki. <laughs> Take that, nerdlinger. I mean, these are very realistic. This is a very realistic discussion. This is like me talking to my professor. Like, I'm a total fuck up. Did you have that? Well, I was already in Harvard by then, so no. <laughs> but I, I respect that you're trying. <laughs> sure. Uh... Yeah, it's like what. <laughs> This does kind of reveal how they didn't really. This does also kind of reveal how they didn't really think out the characters. I think a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah. Especially, I mean, I always, I always bring up the villains, but it's like, eh, well, well, y you know. I mean, he's. Just... I've been doing that well, well thing way too much lately, he... and in like Terraria, people have actually started calling me out on it. Well, Ridgey's just a generic oh, teenager. A I mean, he's really well written as a generic teenager. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, these are all things that teenagers say. Oh yeah, my my leg's better. I if I I don't strain it too much. I'm fine. I'm just concerned about you know hanging out with my buds and whatever. It's cool. I don't know. Look, it's fine. <laughs> Look, I don't know why my thighs are always hurting and stuff, but I guess I'm just growing or something maybe. Ah, uh, sweet times at Ridgemont High. Well, now you can just use all the money you're getting from the, the metaverse to pay for that. It's kind of hard to overstate just how much cash you are bringing from it. It's one of the reasons why I speculated on uh, whoever the, the evil guy is, who I guess could be sunglasses wearing bald man, uh, who's, who's the black mask guy. But as we found out in one of the previous episodes, it's like he... We don't, Persona users can't have palaces because they're so in tune with their... With their uh, uh, inner inner personalities, their inner turmoil that they mm -hmm. don't need a that that the, it manifests itself as a mask for a persona, and it doesn't manifest itself as distorted desires, etc., and so on. You know, this is so it's like it's probably somebody working for him because that guy's gonna have a palace. Um, I don't know, but I'm still speculating that it's like he's using all of uh, the the metaverse uh, riches that he's getting to up his position in society um you know th th this is actually a really good conversation um i i just i i like that yeah this is actually how it sounds like when guidance counters talk to teenagers like just oh yeah uh well i you know i'm trying to get that track scholarship but it, it that looks like that's not really working out for me yeah yeah but uh what were you doing anything else well i guess i'm i'm doing really well at video games i think i might become a pro esports player yeah yeah well you know if you dream it you know, he did actually, uh, when we were doing the exams like a couple weeks ago, he did actually spend all night playing video games instead of studying. So, there's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might not be too far off. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, come on, man. Don't turn down. Yeah, all the time. But, uh, hey, man, don't turn down a, a box of apple juice. That stuff's great. Teenagers love drinking boxes of apple juice and sticking straws in there. I did. <laughs> yeah. And I still do. As of right now, I'm drinking a um uh, uh, a can of ginger beer with a straw in it. Yeah. So stick that in your pipe and smoke it. I will. Maybe maybe I'll. Uh, this backpack is is uh, really really cramped. Too. We should ask Anne about getting something more fashionable but of course that one didn't come up in the english version so i didn't get the line there maybe maybe i will maybe i'll get you a stainless steel s straw collection and i'll send it to you because i forgot about your birthday maybe that's what i'll do you did I... well it's no longer my birthday in the game or in real life oh 
We have flipped on to 525, which is only my birthday when I am trying to type in uh, official forms too fast. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait, no, I hit five too many times. Man, Morgana. Snowball! Morgana. Snowball here is uh, translated from original uh, Shiro-chan, which would be like, uh, old little whitey. <laughs> wow, you, you just, this is, this girl, like, oh, this girl really likes cats. I think that's gotta be some sort of, like, crime or something. I, well... <laughs> oh, this is Persona, so of course. I mean, it is. This is the next villain, aren't they? No, oh. this is this is one of those minor things. In fact, you'll see that I think like literally right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of those minor missions that you go into Mementos to solve. Mm -hmm. No, because you got to remember the the big ones. All the big stuff are gonna get like the 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 Najima scene in the future where she gives us the dossier that says, "Hey, here's the next person you're going for" with a picture of them and everything. Mm, yeah. Those cat abductions. No, right now we're just doing a little bit of gumshoe work. Saving some cats. I just think Which, I mean, the, the thing is, it's true. There have been a lot of cats hanging around uh, Yangen un, uh, up until this point. I'd actually point them out when I saw them. I just think this, this cat lady needs to have a change of heart. That's... My, I'm, I don't know, man. We don't know if it'll actually work that way. Like, they try to convince us every single time. Well, maybe it'll be different. I mean, kind of Shima. Yeah, maybe it'll be different in this in this particular. Actually, that would be a really interesting twist. But no, <laughs> I'm just gonna spot that right now. Let's be honest here. Well, Kamashita was different from Madarame, who is different from whoever is next. I mean, and that has to be explained. I mean, it's episode 34, and we've only had two major villains. There was also the the bully guy and um and Nakanohara. Sweet. Man, remember Nakanohara? You think he would want to know that we we solved the whole matter? No, he's never gonna appear in the game again. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I actually uh, have been listening to "Won't Get Fooled Again," and I've actually got that like that. I I don't know. The beards all grew longer overnight, and I've never heard of Nakanohara. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I think you must be crazy. Well, the game expects that. <laughs> oh. Just like you're not supposed to remember uh, what happened at the very beginning of the game. For a game that doesn't want you to remember, it sure does a lot of repeating. <laughs> <sighs> Only of specific... I've said this before, where it's just like, sometimes they do some things really fast, and then they do some things, like, laboriously, uh, just excruciatingly slow mm -hmm. and repetitively. Mm -hmm. But then there's other stuff like, ah, here's an explanation of how mementos works. Anyway, we're done. Bye. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, uh, there's like a little bit more? No? We're just going to get the, okay, the occasional bits where it's like, hey, we almost got run over by a train. What's up with that? And Morgana's like, ah, it's fine. Yeah, in all fairness, <laughs> well, like, just... as much as I'm, I'm going at the game for repeating a bunch of stuff, I also am completely lost on a lot of the mechanics and meta stuff, like the, the world building stuff, because it's like the only <sighs> yeah, well... there's like 10 hours between the explanations. Well, there's like 10 hours between explanations and then 10 weeks between each episode of this. <laughs> That's true. I can't really say that it's entirely the game's fault. Yeah, at some point it's... Which is something that I say maybe every single episode at this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, well, I mean, it's actually pretty simple. So, here's something interesting. I mean, this is the second guy that I need to talk to. And two, this is supposed to be like 2000... 14, maybe it's supposed to be 2016. This is when the game, that's when the game came mm -hmm. out. And he has an old school boom box right next to him. Wow. Blasting all the hottest tunes of 1991, I guess. Old people are always going around with boom boxes. That's what they do. God, if only. But, uh, no, the, the, the real point is that you can see directly to the left there. Mm. See him? Y y do you see him? Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh. So that's where I found out that apparently Bald Sunglasses Man is named Shido. It's just kind of a generic, uh, obviously kind of hard to read if you don't know Japanese, but it's sort of a generic um, uh, a political poster, you know, advertising this guy. Mm -hmm. But it does give, give his name, which is Shido. Nice. Shido. So now we can stop referring to him as Bald Sunglasses so Guy. So is this the main purpose of this scene? No, the main purpose of the scene is to learn a little bit more about how this woman has been hoarding cats. Okay. And how the police won't do anything about it. 
because they, I don't know. Like a, this huge uh, public disturbance of having dozens of cats inside your apartment is not a problem. Well, I mean, that's pretty much true. It's like, unless you get like a lot of disturbance calls. It probably smells terrible and it is incredibly loud. <laughs> that's true. And they, they are getting disturbance calls from this guy. Okay, that's fair. Well, I mean, only because I don't have the cats. That's a really weird thing for Morgana to say as, as a cat. Like, they're not only hurting cats, but they're also hurting humans, too. That's Neko Jene. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so that's basically all the information we need, and then I got a better look at the poster. Uh, Deshido, for the people. Nina. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> all right, and then, as always, you get a different line from each one of the characters every time you meet at the hideout, so <laughs> didn't get that one either. And I also didn't look at the text long enough to even give you the, uh, the super rough translation of it either. Mm. Yeah, 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 you got to actually look at the request first. <laughs> I don't know why they do it like that, but whatever. And there you go. Time to go after get, get another target. Unfortunately, I can't have multiple targets right now. I feel like I should. Maybe I need to go meet with uh, Mishima first, which is always kind of a... Uh, frustrating bit because it seems like each one of like the major mementos target things doesn't really move forward until you up uh, your social link rank with him again. Anyway, yet again, we know why do we why do we have to review all of this? I just been I guess maybe if you did this way later, it would be something different. That's actually a good point. But I don't know. It feels like it would. I, I don't know if they have like Persona is a big thing based on doing stuff day by day you know having like a activities that do you, know, you gotta be like on the right day of the week and then there are seasonal changes and stuff like that that are going to happen eventually so it would be weird if it's just like yeah this is always a thing that's that's around maybe something like the bully thing you could justify but like cats not as much that's so weird that morgana is like again like let's solve this for all the cats in yangan and their owners like fuck the cats are valuable in and of themselves they don't well, deny Morgana originally wanted to do cat. this because of the cats what was that i don't know i Morgana does, even though as much as he does not want to admit that he's a cat, he does have a certain affinity for them. It's just he does not want to admit this to himself. Oh, okay. That's fair. I think it's a... Eh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to justify it. I mean, that it's reasonable. Alright, so basically, it's, it's just... They're always the same thing. And then you jump out of the bus. Well, roll out of the bus. Go get um that. Convenient that Morgana has space for any number of party members, like up to like ten or twelve. Uh well, so like they're already playing Calvin Ball with the way that this uh, thing works anyway. Mm -hmm. As always, I love the the great villain shot we get here of this super normal looking person. <laughs> I think it was better with Nagano Hara as he just had a suit on and it's like, man. <laughs> Yeah, Shirochan versus Snowball. I, you, Morgana, Morgana, please. Snowball says what? What? What do you, what do you mean, Snowball? Yeah, you said it. Hey, it's Nekamata, another very classic, uh, classic demon from the, the Kaneko era of, uh, SMT. Or Megaton entirely. I think he's actually been there since, like, the OG NES games. That makes sense. Uh, kind of a weird design with, like, the, the, uh, the face mask like that and, and everything, the, the but stance. also at the same time, well, <laughs> they certainly continue that sort of trend to this very day with Anne's persona. And Chie's persona in the previous game. That is such a weird, uncomfortable game stance. Yeah, I mean it's it is a it's like a translation of uh, the 2D sprite that they used. Oh. 
So it's it's actually like super accurate. I'll give them that. I mean, that's actually been true for a lot of the things. I even pointed out back in like Kamoshida's dungeon where there was uh, succubus enemies that like when they were fighting normally, they were one of the sprites that they used. But then when they were like low on health, they used a different sprite that appeared in the games of them like crouching down. It's actually a pretty good reference. They have been like super accurate to uh, to the old art so far. But yeah, that might look a little bit strange. But you know, she's doing the she's doing the cat thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, she does look like a fighting game character, though. She doesn't look like she's like she would not be out of place in in Soul Calibur. Yeah, that that actually does look like a lot like a Soul Calibur thing. Absolutely. Or um, or like Dark Stalkers, I suppose would probably be the more apt comparison. There is no reason to do this. <laughs> We certainly didn't do this for, like, Nakanohara or the bully guy. We, again, we don't need to. And, and once again, also, it's like... This this reminds me a lot of like when um, Joker was the one who had to pick what the the fake uh, painting of Sayuri was back in Madarame's palace, mm -hmm. and it's just like, Yusuke, you're standing right here. You're right here. Why can't you just do this? It's like, nah, man, you're the leader. We love you, Joker. <laughs> you're our favorite guy. Now, what is the system? Yeah, I'm aware of how the the the. Demon negotiation goes game. Been doing it for a time now. Oh my god, Morgana. <laughs> I like the Morgana. I know it's just the, like the the art, but it, Morgana looks like genuinely pissed about this. <laughs> Morgana and I sharing a mood. That's not how snowballs are made happy. You, you keep snowballs happy by freezing them or, you know, putting them with other snow, putting them on a snowman. I don't know, would snowballs be happy to be larger? I feel like they have to be happy to be larger. Like, I, think, I think this is coming from a human perspective with the idea that they would want to be a snowman. It's a sort of like how you think robots want to have emotions, but do they really? Well, they can't want anything if they don't have emotions. No, no, it, it's true. It's impossible for, for robots to have emotions, as I've learned through, like, the last three games I've played. I would say um, snowballs want to, like, all join together in a big, like, snowball instrumentality project kind of thing. Yes. All right, once again, entirely pointless, but uh, there. Snowball is happiest when it's in a glacier, I think. Got a hundo buckaroonies from it. And a level. And a new skill! Even though Ouroboros is not really my favorite persona, whatever, he's here. He's, he's doing the thing. This is like literally how uh, the first Shenmue started. <laughs> Except instead of going on a kung fu revenge story that is actually more about driving around forklifts and fishing and uh, plying old men with booze, in, in, in instead she just hoarded cats when the when the rain turned to snow I always think about like just the, the huge comparisons that you can get with the Shenmue series and like this mm. both being made well, both original both under Sega at one point in time mm. nice. Shenmue back in the day uh, Persona right now and of course, there is still the Yakuza series, which I feel like have a lot of comparisons, you know, when there's like so many like little side quests and like goofy things to do outside of a main main plot line. I think Yakuza does it a little bit better, though. <laughs> but 
But that's also because I think Kiryu has a personality. It is pretty endearing that Morgana doesn't like to be a cat. Like, thought of as a cat. Well, I mean, she's also going to jail, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't got to take no guff from her. And, and I'll never do it again. Well, you won't be. You should be in jail. What's Morgana saying? Yeah, oh, we don't have any more targets around here. Uh, so the decision to quit is yours. Okay. No, no. I know what this stuff says. It's just like I said, it's not perfect yet. Mm -hmm. It's got to be better than what it is. See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> that is convenient. I mean, it's just like... Uh, well... I mean, once she pays for her crimes... Oh, okay. So, I don't know. Did she need to pay for her crimes? I... I it sounds like it. I don't know. I mean... Sounds like she just needs to, like... I don't think any of the cats, like, died or... I don't know how, what the law is for this. <laughs> but I feel like, I don't know, that's, like, a little harsh. Well, anyway. Hey, we're back to this. Uh, yeah, you are. Definitely, Ryuji. Like, unquestionably. You are super screwed, but he's not going to go through with it because we already know this. Okay, so here's something I want to pitch to you right now. Mm -hmm. We got about, like, through episode 40 uh, charted out, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, are you there? Yes, I am. No. So we got about, like, episode 40 charted out. But uh, basically past that point, I haven't done much of anything else with the series as of just yet. Mm -hmm. So here's what I was considering. Like, starting to splice in some of footi some footage from the English version of Persona. Just to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> for stuff like the IM sections, for example, which are all pretty... Yeah. Well, I, I think that if that is gonna... Like, is this, like, so we can get through the game, like, more quickly? In a reasonable amount of time, yes. Okay. I, th like stuff like that, stuff like this one, where it's like I've already I've already started up with like Tornosuke's whole, uh, like start there Yoshida, mm -hmm. what, I've, what I've been calling him before, but uh, yeah, like Yoshida, I've already started up with this whole thing, so this is kind of a pointless conversation, but I included it anyway because it's content. Mm -hmm. It's like, instead of starting to, like, cut out stuff because I still want to show the game in its entirety, what I was thinking was just instead not go through the whole uh, Japanese subtitle thing and just split in some of the ink, some English stuff instead. I think that'd be fine, yeah. I for, for, like, less important scenes. Still keep it for, like, all the major plot stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. I, I mean... It's one of those things where, unless it's going to be more trouble than it's... I, I don't know what your time is, timings are on this. Like, it could be that it's more efficient to just translate them because then you don't have to have a separate save file and go through the entire game twice, but... I already do a ridiculous amount of uh, editing work for this anyway. And you do have to remember that I insert each one of the subtitles in here manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I suppose. So it's like cutting in five minutes of footage versus five minutes of footage and then 35 subtitles. Oh, I see. So, yeah, no, that would do it. This this sort of thing. Well, I mean, it's like, yes, I'm well aware. Yeah, it's like, a, you know, the, the school sections, like I said, it's stuff like the bus ride things. I mean, I'm also throwing this out here just in case people want to say anything in the comments. Uh, the, but somehow I doubt anybody's going to say anything because nobody watches the series. Hey, a few people do. You finally get, uh, you can finally learn that my, uh, my English main character is named Sans Undertale for reasons that I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. The reason that... That the, the main character in the, the, the Japanese version is AA is because I just wanted to get into the game already and I didn't want to spend time coming up with a name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I live one. But, you know, I, that's how it is. I think um, the thing about uh, Sans Undertale is that's an instant way to give your, your silent protagonist some kind of character. It's kind of cheap, but that's... <laughs> 
I mean, that's as good as it gets, so... <laughs> that's right. This is a prequel to Undertale. The main character from this game is also the main character from Undertale. Sans Undertale, the main character of Undertale. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, skirt... Just, uh, technically different. <laughs> now, I'm just curious, like, just uh, from a translation perspective, how are they doing this? Are they doing this just with, like, Kana? Um, like the Sherlock Holmes thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's... Any sort of uh, transliteration of names is just done with Kana. I see. So it's more like uh, her, her like a, you know, shirt, shawl, shawl this kind of thing. Yeah, except, uh, like I said, given like the, the closest sort of transliteration that you can get with, uh, with Kana as opposed to trying to suss something out with like a kanji. I mean, you wouldn't have a specific kanji for anybody's name that's not, that doesn't already have that in their name. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like if we're talking Chinese, that has, uh, it's got its own system that I do not remember the name of, so, so you, where it's like it does use individual letters, but those are representative of, uh, of sounds rather than like having any inherent semantic meaning by themselves. So, so in Japanese, they can't say no shit, Sherlock, because that would be too many characters that wouldn't come off as well. No, they could easily say well, that, and they would. I mean, what do what they have a more... They probably have a better expression. Oh, by the way, also, uh, yep, we got uh, we got Ryuji continuing to be a teenage boy. <laughs> you know what that means. Dude, you're like 16. <laughs> They're not going to just send somebody over. <laughs> well, anyway, one of the other things is that in this scene, Ryuji sounds super weird. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like the whole thing where he's dropping his gerunds and you know, like uh, mumbling stuff, talking like a tough guy. It's just to hide the fact that he's got a weird voice. <laughs> I mean, like th this doesn't seem like something Ryuji would say. Uh, I don't. This is also something that kind of happened in Persona Four too, where it's like uh, the 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 equivalent character of this was also a weird pervo so i don't know <laughs> maybe this is just a call back to that well anyway this does go in this does go somewhere i, I do think it's it's um it's breaking with his character being you're into this kind of stuff ryuji you are but you, you you're a kinky dude man <laughs> I mean, he's just... Yusuke's clearly just been sheltered. It's something. <laughs> That's Mishima, by the way. Yusuke has definitely been sheltered. Though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually did confuse uh, Mishima and Yusuke for a very long time. When I first thought, saw Mishima, I thought he was going to be the new uh, party member, but it's like, no, it's the other guy. Yeah, <sighs> man. Well, anyway, that's going to be the next episode. Okay. In Japanese, made watching party. 